you, I, I can't wait to be in church every single I don't always want to be in church, and I'm the pastor. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. Not faith in a religion, but faith in the word. And that what God says is true. No matter what you feel, no matter what you think, we walk by the word of God because the word of God is our guide. The word of God is God's message to us to keep us like him. And when the word gets in your life and faith starts to build, then you can look at any mountain and say, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt, you shall have what you ask. Some of you have been wondering why you have been spinning in circles in your Christianity for years, and it's because you've never learned how to forgive. Out of the 84 people that started in my Bible school, 42 graduated. Out of the 42 graduated, there are only six of us left in the ministry. And I have found as I've talked to pastors where I traveled for years, I traveled full-time as an evangelist for three years, and I traveled in the Bible school uh, drama team for three years, and this is what I found. The pastors that have not learned how to forgive do not stay in ministry. Because in the ministry, you get whacked all the time. And you've got to learn how to forgive. And it's not always easy. Are you out there now? Forgiveness isn't easy. In fact, let's just, let's just talk about how to do this thing. Matthew chapter 5. How many of you know that sometimes when you go to the doctor and they inoculate you, that the needle doesn't always feel good? If you're a parent and you take your babies to get inoculated, you're holding your baby and you see that needle come out, <laughs> and your baby's sitting there, and you're going, oh, baby, I know what you're going to feel right now. You're not even getting it. You're getting offended because your baby's going to get poked. Whack. Now, we took Cody to go get inoculated one time. I think it took six people to hold him down. And the doctor finally looked at me and says, I can't do it. I'll break the needle off inside of him. He won't stop moving. He hates needles. I don't know how in the world he ever got a tattoo, but he hates needles. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't always feel good to hear the truth. Sometimes it doesn't always perk you up when you hear the truth. But the truth will make you free. Just like that inoculation doesn't always feel good. But what's happening is it stops sickness from coming into the child's life. It stops sickness from coming into an adult's life. This word will stop sickness from getting in your life. And what is that sickness called? It's called bitterness. It's called unforgiveness. It's called anger. It's called wrath. It's called malice. And the greatest, and the greatest crime of it all is the devil is able to steal your very purpose of breath of why you're on this planet. Are you there? Matthew chapter 5. Yahoo! You can say that. Go ahead. Just say Yahoo. Yahoo. Doesn't that feel better? Yeah. Turn to someone and say, Yahoo! Yahoo. And like I said, the word doesn't always feel good, but it is good for you. Matthew chapter 5. This is how it's supposed to happen. Turn to someone and say, This is how it's supposed to happen. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there, remember. So you know what's happening is, you know, you come. Leave that up for me, gentlemen and ladies. What, you know, you're, you're coming to the altar. You know you're in love with Jesus, and you're coming to the altar, and you kneel down to seek God, and as you kneel down to seek God, you remember. No, really, leave that up. 
you remember that your brother has something against you. Has anybody here ever offended anybody before? Can we be honest? How many of you have ever offended somebody before? How many of you offended somebody this week? <laughs> if you're married, just raise your hand. That's an automatic thing. <laughs> Therefore, you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there and go. The Bible says, you don't wait for them to come to you. You go to them. Before you go to your friends that are going to agree with you. Before you find somebody to go pee on or puke on. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm painting those pictures because they're not pretty. And you wouldn't let anybody do that in the natural. But you let people do it to you all the time in the spirit. You wouldn't let anybody do that to you in the natural, but you do it to other people. The Bible says before you go to anybody else, you don't wait for them to come to you. You go to them. But what if they don't accept it? That's not, that's not, that's not your problem. See, forgiveness has very little to do with the other person. Forgiveness has everything to do with you. See, when you and I don't forgive, when you and I take an offense, when you and I hold a grudge, are you out there? Then what happens is we tie ourselves up in a ball and then whine and complain because we're in a ball. And the word of God is just saying, listen, even if they don't accept your apology, you need to learn how to set yourself free. Can I explain a few real scenarios in my life? I've had a few offenses. At least two. One of them, I had a youth pastor. This is in my prior church. I went to the Bible school, went over all the resumes. This guy was like in the Marines. He was fired up. Man, he had a charisma that was just absolutely magnetized. And so I hired him right out of Bible school. The church was a very small church up in the Colbunk Hills of Newfield, New York, where literally the cows would peer into the windows as well as horses and pheasants. He came to my wife and I and he said, Pastor, uh, my car is dying. Is there a way that your wife and you could loan me $1,500? That, that was a lot of money to me. You know, I, when I started at that church, I was making $10 a week, full time. I drove school bus to be able to survive. We ate a lot of spaghetti and a lot of chicken and rice. So $1,500 meant it was coming off what? My credit card, which means I wasn't too intelligent either. He showed me the car. He says, my parents will loan me the other half. If you'll loan me the other $1,500, I'll pay you $100 a week until it's paid off. And I figured, you know what? I, you know, $100 a week, you know, we, we, that'll be good, right? So my wife and I lent him $1,500. And we lent him $1,500, and we got three week, weeks' worth of payments and not another dime. He quit. Well, actually, we helped him quit. And he went on his way and disappeared. About four months later, I was at my Bible college graduation. I don't know, what was it? It was my 10 year anniversary or something. And so I'm at this graduation. You know, this is Bible college. You know, there's 700 people there. They've got their graduates there. And, and, and I look over, and he's there.